Tonight on CTV News, a Canterbury medical expert makes a scientific breakthrough on heart disease and the AMP show is back. Broadcasting across Canterbury. From the CTV studio, this is First at Five. Good evening to you. We could be one step closer to finding out who's most at risk of heart disease. And the discovery by a Canterbury University researcher is being described as a medical breakthrough. Edward Marks is hard at work. The master's student is researching into how to discover the early signs of a heart attack. In this lab, he's discovered that patients with large amounts of a certain blood protein have a slimmer chance of recovering from a heart attack. We found a good correlation between this biomarker, SFLT1, and their rate of mortality. So uh, the patients died sooner with higher levels of SFLT1. In large amounts, the protein stops blood vessels and arteries from healing. Edward won an Innovation Award for his work, and the field his supervisor has been researching for several decades. Ed's project, we're combining both clinical measurements where you take samples out of patients' blood and real um, sort of experiments where you try and model those processes at the bench, and then we're trying to marry up the two sets of data. So he's not only looking at uh, what happens with the tissue when you do experiments with it, he's actually then measuring stuff out of real people and saying, do I see the same things? For the research, more than 400 patients were tested. The protein was only found inside the blood of people with heart disease. In the contro healthy control groups, we found uh, almost a hundredfold decrease in SFLT1. So the higher the SFLT1 um, indicated an increase in death, essentially. Based on this research, Edward wants to analyse patients to determine their future risk. He will compare the amounts of the protein with healthy and sick patients. The high levels of the protein have proven to be associated with high levels of a chemical released by active inflammatory white blood cells. This indicates an association between cardiovascular disease, inflammation and the protein SFLT1. Heart disease is an uh, inflammatory disease, it's like rheumatoid arthritis or, or pussy wound in your hand even, uh, but it's a process that's going on inside the arteries. So cholesterol affects the process but the underlying driver is uh, the white blood cells and how they respond. A decrease in oxygen would increase the amount of the protein and therefore this is probably why we're seeing this increase in the SFLT1. T1 protein with um, higher stages of cardiovascular disease. Clinical trials of the discovery would be a dream come true for the master's student. That's what we're hoping for. Um, nothing's been developed as of yet, but it's in the running, so um, hopefully we can make good of it. Edward's supervisor says that in the next five years, predicting heart disease will be made easier. I don't have any non-invasive, non-horrible ways of finding out whether somebody's got heart disease. I mean, the most definitive way is to basically cut open somebody's groin artery, stick a camera up on a tube and have a look. Well, that's kind of dangerous, um, unpleasant and quite painful, of course. Um, but that's the only definitive way to really know. We don't have good imaging technology. The University of Canterbury is helping to build a multi-million dollar X-ray machine, able to analyse arteries to work out how healthy a patient is. This could allow patients to reduce their heart disease risk in the future. Marcus Gibbs, CTV News. An elderly advocate is warning the rebuild is too slow and older people are dying before their homes are rebuilt or repaired. John Patterson has written an open letter to the people in charge of the rebuild, including Earthquake Recovery Minister Jerry Brownlee, the Mayor, Sarah and EQC officials. He says elderly should be able to move into their homes and enjoy them before they die. Mr Patterson says four years is a long time to wait when you're in your 70s and your 80s. Well, this year's AMP show is already attracting strong crowds. The three-day event kicked off this morning and is already packing in the punches on the showgrounds. But there are still two days to go and CTV spoke to some of the punters who will be turning up this week. More than 100,000 Cantabrians will visit the AMP show this week. The family favourite is in its 152nd year. So what is the main draw card? Is it the animals or the attractions? The first day of the show is historically the quietest. 25,000 people are expected to turn out today. Another 75,000 will roll on down later in the week. CTV News spoke to Cantabrians who decided to leave their gumboots at home and hit the local malls instead. After 152 years, 
as the show still manages to draw out the crowds. Oh, I'm very excited. Going to take the kids along and, um, yeah, it's a great week. Hopefully the weather stays lovely. <laughs> Why do you want to go see it this year? I don't know. There's no particular reason. I just go every year. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty excited. It's great if you go along here. <laughs> it's a chance for the town to go and have a look at the country stuff. A great chance for the townies to get out and see what the country people actually get up to and what's involved in their industry and everything. My in-laws have got some stock there, so yeah, I'll go down for a look. I've probably been to more AMP shows than you've had birthdays. <laughs> I'm an ex-farmer, so I've been there, done that. Yeah. Getting close to Christmas, good relaxing time for people, I think. Take a bit of time out from work and enjoy the festivities of the AMP show and show day at the races. As most people told me, it's a chance for the city folk to mix with the country bumpkins. Of course, there was no question about the public holiday on Canterbury's anniversary day continuing. Yeah, it should be. Hmm. Well, we'd all miss it, I think, if we did not have it. Yes, I'm self-employed and um, my staff will be off enjoying themselves as well. A chance for Cantabrians to relax and unwind. Marcus Gibbs, CTV News. And we'll have more coverage from the AMP show in tomorrow night's bulletin. So while Cup Day revellers were probably nursing sore heads today, a local community group were really getting to the spirit of the event, holding their own fashion parade in Wainoni. Keeping on trend with Cup Day, this group of fashionistas is showing up the best dressed finalists from yesterday's races, holding their own fashion show to take out the top prize as Wainoni's best dressed. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank you. Colleen. Carleen Edwards, the Christchurch City Council's chief executive, giving up her duties to take a seat on the judging panel, noting some overseas fashions in the local looks. And then Janice, I thought had a very Melbourne style, having just come from Melbourne, but the black and white, but with just a, just a hint of, of, a, of a nod towards Christmas. Proving fashion isn't just for the females. One male model took to the runway to outshine the woman. It's embarrassing part of the lot. <laughs> These contestants showing it's not about splashing out thousands of dollars on outfits to become best dressed. Just gone through the wardrobe to have a bit of fun. And uh, yeah, so we just borrow the hats and the other things. The show is a tradition the group have been sticking to for more than a decade. Most of the people in this area don't go to the show, so we have our own and um, people and it just gets them dressed up and maked up and jewellery and it just makes them feel good. You know. The event was part of weekly activities by the Wainoni Methodist Church. The council's chief executive congratulating local groups for sticking together. These times where people, you know, are under a lot of pressure and stress, a chance to get together, enjoy each other's company and have a bit of fun is just tremendous. But for many of these residents, it's an escape from earthquake reminders, with many of them still awaiting home repairs and rebuilds, almost four years after the February earthquake. The hard ones are still being, um, being fixed up now, so they're still in limbo. And it's hard when you're in your 80s and you're in limbo until next year. Preparations are already in place for next year's show. Maybe some of these fashion forward models could take on the talent at Addington Raceway. Emma Cropper, CTV News. Coming up, coming up next on CTV News, the 3D printing industry is exciting local high tech enthusiasts. Just a seven minutes north of Christchurch, Silverstream is a unique residential community carefully planned and developed within a rich natural environment. A family home or terraced villas, Silverstream offers a wide range of living options for every stage of life. The show homes are open. You can select your section, design your home and choose your builder. Purchase the house and land package or the terraced villa for streamside living. Silverstream, a community for everyone. It's closer than you think. Hi, I'm Mark and welcome to Stay Well Pharmacy. At Stay Well Pharmacy we do more than just dispense prescriptions. As Canterbury's most experienced supplier of compression hosiery and travel socks, our friendly staff can assist you with all your needs when it comes to looking after your health. Whether you're recovering from surgery, taking that overseas trip or wanting to stop those tired aching legs, Stay Well Pharmacy has you covered. Bookings are essential. For a new direction in your future health, call us today. Stay Well Pharmacy. Live well, stay well. My son's helped me greatly with my independence now that I've got more mobility. Mum, I've been looking into stand assist chairs from More Mobility. They recline back with a footrest, then when you want to get out of them they stand you up. You can even sleep on them. More Mobility can bring one out for a free trial. 
There's even electric beds too. What do you think? For more range and more expert advice, see More Mobility, corner Clarence and Princess Streets off Blenheim Road. What a difference More Mobility makes. Welcome back to CTV News. Well, relief in Rolleston following the opening of a brand new facility for those with special needs. The St John of God building will provide 24-hour care and the manager is thanking the local community for getting right in behind the trust. A new health and ability facility has opened in Rolleston, costing almost $800,000. The new development has two fully accessible homes with 24-hour staffing. Well, it's a, a facility for the handicapped here, and it's uh, putting them into a house or a home situation rather than a hospital-type situation so they can attempt to live as near a normal life as they can. Today was the opening of the second stage. Owners bought the property two years ago, converting it into a much-needed facility for the community. Stage one was opened uh, some two years ago but otherwise no, this is the main facility of this nature. There are some others as uh, St John of God have in Hallsville which is just outside the boundaries of Selwyn. Calvin Coe, Selwyn's district mayor, is highly supportive of the new facility and thinks it will be greatly beneficial for the people living within the community. I think it's great to have it in the community. It saves us having to go to Christchurch or go for, and for local people to be, stay in their local community. So for from that point of view, it's absolutely fantastic. The homes are a social model of care, where people with complex needs can live a full life as part of a supportive community. Regional manager of the Health and Ability Services, Virginia Spores, says Rolleston was the ideal place for the community-based services. Because of its design to be accessible, it has good access to community services such as the Selwyn Aquatic Centre, and it has a vibrant community life. The opening of the home is a sign of the fast-growing population in Selwyn. It's been named the fastest-growing district in the country, with its population increasing by more than 4% each year. That's five times the national average. Well, I guess there was always had been a need for some facility of this type, but as you're suggesting, as the population grows, the need becomes greater, the size of the facility gets larger, and what we've seen open today doubles the facility that we have here in Rolleston. Residents will be making themselves at home in the complex within the Coming weeks. Emma Cropper, CTV News. Environment Canterbury is carrying out arsenic testing on a subdivision in Darfield following trace elements identified on a number of properties. Both ECAN and Selwyn Council say the levels have not shown any signs of being immediately dangerous but are advising residents to take basic hygiene precautions such as washing hands after contact with soil. The Stanwood Grove subdivision was built about 10 years ago on a shipyard, but the council says testing showed arsenic in the soil at the time was a safe level. And after build at least, ECAN's testing would take about six weeks to identify how dangerous those levels are today. Well, the New Zealand Silver Fern Rally is underway with stages on Banks Peninsula held over the past few days. The biannual Silver Fern Marathon Rally got underway in Picton on Saturday with the eight-day event covering 2,500 kilometres of touring and 1,200 kilometres of special stages. The rally reached Canterbury on Monday where I caught up with the drivers in this year's event. Local driver Jeff Judd was the first car back at service. Arriving just after six o'clock, it had been a long but enjoyable day for all involved. A lot of fun, a lot of tough hard roads and uh, long days. It was a 7am start this morning in Westport, so yeah, a bit hot and sweaty, waiting for a shower tonight. The two-wheel drive, long day, week-long format of the Silver Fern is what separates it from current events. Brent Rawstrin is a name that needs no introduction in New Zealand rallying and he's seen the sport evolve over the decades. I was an active competitor until four-wheel drive came on the scene. I really thought, I really don't want to adapt to four-wheel drive and I certainly didn't want to adapt to pace notes. And so consequently we invented classic rallying back in 1990, I think it was, and did the 21st anniversary classic rally of New Zealand. And from that has, has come out the Otago Classic and of course now the Silver Fern. Uh, but a group of us got together and said, you know, classic, ra classic racing is good, classic rallying should be equally as popular and now just look at it. Uh, it's just, just fabulous guys coming from all over the world to compete here. One of those drivers is Englishman Vince Bristow. This is Bristow's fourth Silver Fern. I asked him what it was that keeps bringing him back. 
It's just fantastic. Stages are good. People are lovely. Um, usually nice weather, but you know it's a, a mixed mixed bag. Um, no, I just really enjoy. Uh, just I just love the stages. You know, over here this rally is uh, two years worth of our full championship rounds. So it's just just amazing. The cars are what makes the event, and with much of the field running Mark II Ford Escorts, the driver and spectator favourite has stood up well to the test of time, not only in terms of reliability, but also race pace. There's a challenge rally running at the same time as the, as the uh, Silverfield Historic, and uh, the first, I think, four cars overall in stage time are BDA Escorts. And then you've got the Honda, then you've got all sorts of stuff after it. But even the modern cars uh, that are in this two-wheel drive cars uh, aren't able to match the pace of, of, of the BDAs, which are, they've evolved into a heck of a lot different car to what they were in the 80s. And they just got better and better, more reliable, somewhat quicker. Yesterday saw the drivers take on seven special stages, including five around Banks Peninsula, with the tight downhill sections not renowned as driver favourites. Well, I've only rallied on them once, um, four years ago. I didn't particularly enjoy them. Big drops, really slippery gravel, and uh, we were one on the road then because the first guy actually went off about 500 metres in. So we're going to be one on the road tomorrow too. If it's dry, it'll be slippery as. If there's a little bit of rain, it'll help make it a bit grippier. But, yeah, I, we're just going to behave ourselves there and, and then have some fun down on the Timaru roads later in the day. Very treacherous and predominantly downhill. Uh, it's, for some reason we always start the stages from the summit road and go to the bottom of the valley. Holding a lead of over three minutes going into yesterday's stages, Jeff Judd found trouble on the day's second stage, bending his steering. The day didn't get any better for Juddy as he lost time on the final stage around the peninsula with a puncture surrendering his once healthy lead to Vince Bristow. The day was even worse for Brent Rawstrin who had this off later in the day, a broken tie rod forcing his temporary withdrawal. Today's stages saw the drivers head south from Timaru with Jeff Judd reclaiming his lead this morning as he and Bristow battled for the lead. With three more days of the rally to go, there is sure to be plenty of drama before the cars finish in Queenstown on Saturday. Gordon Findlater, CTV Sport. We'll sort of come business news and your local weather. Espresso Car Wash. Bring back the shine with options from an express wash for just $28 up to a fully detailed interior and exterior grooming package from just $63. We also offer services such as interior shampoo, wax and polish, aircon treatment, odour eliminator, vehicle de-stickering, the list goes on. And don't forget our gift vouchers, no matter what the occasion. Espresso Car Wash at five great Christchurch locations. Corner Lincoln Road and Morehouse Ave, The Palms, Northlands, Ferrymead and The Hub Hornby. Hi, I'm Mark and welcome to Stay Well Pharmacy. At Stay Well Pharmacy we do more than just dispense prescriptions. As Canterbury's most experienced supplier of compression hosiery and travel socks, our friendly staff can assist you with all your needs when it comes to looking after your health. Whether you're recovering from surgery, taking that overseas trip or wanting to stop those tired aching legs, Stay Well Pharmacy has you covered. Bookings are essential. For a new direction in your future health, call us today. Stay Well Pharmacy. Live well, stay well. The world really is your oyster with Farm to Farm Tours. Discover some of the world's best farming, scenery and cultural experiences. We work closely with trusted international colleagues in more than 30 countries to customise great trips for people just like you. For a hassle-free trip, call the friendly team at Farm to Farm Tours now or visit our website. Avoid the monkeys when it comes to relocating. Trust A1 Movers, a family business since 1993 that guarantees a professional job every time. We carefully handle and wrap your valued items, ensuring they have a safe journey. Secure storage and insurance options are also available. A1 Movers, the careful, caring, moving company. Oi! Welcome back to CDV News. Now Warren Head is here with this week's Business Roundup. I'm Warren Head from headliner.co.nz. 
Uh, today, the Reserve Bank decided against uh, removing or part of the LVR speed limit on mortgage borrowing. Bad news for those people who are looking to get into the home ownership market, but there's no likely timetable for the removal of the limit uh, coming through from the authority just yet. The bank seems to be happy about the slowdown which has occurred, and one of the banks today was saying that the growth rate of house price escalation has slowed to 5% compared with 9.5% or 9.4% about a year ago. So they're pretty pleased with that. Doesn't help you if you're trying to get into a house. But in Auckland in particular, where the cost of a new house for construction, I believe, is now around $600,000. That's a lot of uh, effort to get into a property without a decent sized deposit. And it's going to stay up at the current levels to get one. The criteria for when the limit will be reduced is continually under review. But one of the things that's clearly worrying the Reserve Bank is this huge surge in our population with migration levels and record numbers of people coming through. On the local front, uh, the Kiwi Income Property Trust reported and embedded in their detail today was a comment that they have reached settlement on the Northlands Shopping Centre insurance claims and they have stacked up now at $70.2 million uh, against which Remedial Works covering $10 million have been completed at Northland. So that's why those stores are in operation in the north side of town. The other thing that came through this week was an indication from the main freight group that things are looking quite uh, good in respect to their business overall. A few problems in Europe. Uh, their profit was down a bit, but revenue was targeting for $2 billion for the year ahead. And finally, I guess tomorrow at Addington, and also um, at Rickerton at the weekend, uh, people will be going back to the track uh, to spend more money. So far, there appears to have been about $6 million spent on the races. There was about $1.8 million spent on the Trotting Cup this week. And of course, out of that, there's some economic benefit. The local council puts the economic benefit at about $14.5 million. Quite hard to see how these numbers do stack up, uh, but we have about 5,000 beds in the, ho in the hotels in the city at the moment, and of course they're a bit short there. The, the uh, level of bookings for hotels in terms of the last few years is well down, particularly internationally, and soft overall. So we need a good week out of it. I'm told on good authority that 30% of the runners uh, these days who are favourites in a race will return money for you, or hopefully win. Unfortunately, I've always been on the other 70%. I'm already head for headliner.co.nz. Thank you, Warren. Now time for the region's weather. Starting in Timaru, Tamuka and Geraldine, they had a high of 14. Methin and Ashburton had a high of 14, while Rakai was there on 14 degrees as well. Starfield, Leeston and Rolleston hitting a nice 14 degrees today. Looking now at Lincoln and Christchurch, sunshine all day with a high of 14 degrees. Over in Akadawa, 14 degrees. Heading north to Rangiora, Kaiapoi and Amberley, they had a high of 14. Culverton, Hadner Springs and Cheviot had one of the region's highs of 15. At the very top in Kaikoura, 15 degrees. But what about tomorrow? In Timaru, cloudy and cold with showers and fresh to strong southwesterly winds. An overnight low of 4, hitting a high of 12 degrees. In Ashburton, frequent light showers all day with a strong cold southwesterly wind is expected. Four degrees overnight with a high of 11. Christchurch, a chilly Thursday ahead with showers and cold winds all day, hitting a low of four and a high of 12.
In Kaikoura, cloudy and cold with showers and fresh to strong southwesterly winds. Four degrees overnight with a high of 11. And in other areas around the region, Tamuka and Geraldine expect a high of 12 and low of 4. Methven and Rakaia showers for most parts of the day, hitting a high of 12 degrees. Darfield, Leeston and Rolleston expect an overnight low of 4 and high of 12. Looking at Lincoln, cold showers are reaching a high of 12 degrees. Over in Akadawa, expect the region's high with 11 degrees. As long as I got you. Rangiura, Kaipui and Amberley heading a high of 12 with showers for most parts of the day. Colverton, Hamna Springs and Cheviot have your rain jackets ready. Expect showers with a high of 12 degrees. And looking ahead for the coming days in Canterbury, fine on Friday with southwesterlies at first dying out, then cool northeasterly winds developing and increasing high cloud during the afternoon. Expect mild northwesterlies freshening at night. Strong gusty northwesterlies and high cloud on Saturday morning. Colder gusty southwesterlies developing during the afternoon with a few thunderstorms or hail showers possible. Mostly fine and sunny on Sunday with some high cloud and moderate northeasterly winds. Fine with high High cloud and light winds at first on Monday, but moderate colder southerlies and scattered showers developing during the afternoon and evening. Showers and fresh cold southwesterlies at first on Tuesday, clearing then becoming fine during the afternoon with northeasterly winds developing. And that's your region's weather for this Wednesday. And finally tonight here at CTV News, well you wouldn't think so, but apparently sun, surf and sandals are on the way and it doesn't feel like it today. What about that hail we experienced? But Think of these images, it's not too far away, and the Cancer Society is reminding people to take care and cover up this summer. They're saying we're just over a month away from the longest day of the year, and the sun is at its hottest between 10am to 4pm. These summer messages, what is going on when we're getting hail, like massive hail today? Anyway, that is our news for Wednesday. Have a great night. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.